I love to run. Every day I jog between two and five miles, depending on my work schedule. Since I usually have Sundays off, I run ten miles. Tuesdays, when boss calls for an early meeting, I jog two miles. It's been said to me many times, why run when you have a perfectly good car? Most people consider me insane, but it's the best way to keep me sane. You see, I don't like my job, and I especially don't like my boss. I'm Sander Mortensen, and I'm 25. I graduated two years ago in business management, and am currently working on my master's in the same field. Boss has tried to make my overcomplicated, scholarly life less complicated by doing me little favors, like putting me in charge of the mailroom. I usually arrange my schedule with the other person in the mailroom, an older guy nearing retirement named Josh. He's a nice guy, merely biding his time until retirement. He got on Boss's bad side years ago, and Boss holds a grudge. Boss considers the mailroom a punishment, I guess, but both Josh and I thrive. We are in charge of not only snail mail and its delivery, but email as well. Another department deals with the servers. We only have to keep email software running. I usually come in mornings, Josh in afternoons. I used to work afternoons, but boss would sometimes join me on Fridays, close to quitting time. I used to wonder why. Then he asked me out for drinks. I suspect he's been hitting on me. Switching shifts with Josh kind of solved the problem. My life sounds simple, or it should sound simple. I'm gay, very gay, nothing but net kind of gay. I've had one fiancé, now an ex, and a dozen or so one-night stands. Compared to some guys, I haven't had a lot of partners. I'm not comfortable dating these days. Boss is named Marcus Richardson, but I just call him Boss, and he's 20 years older than me, with a wife and two teenage children, a very nice condo, and a mortgage. I've met his wife and two kids at the last Christmas party. Nice people. Marcus takes care of himself, lift weights three times a week, does some kind of cardio three times a week. You'd think he'd show a little bit of gray, but he doesn't. You'd think he'd have a little bit of a belly. After all, he's middle-aged, but he doesn't. Firm skin, a tight belly, a tighter chin, and he's always clean-shaven. He dresses nice as well, always wore a button-down shirt, a nice tie, polished penny loafers, and professionally groomed hair. He's a player, but his wife doesn't suspect. He told me once that back during his college days, he considered himself bi, and last Friday night, he pulled me aside right before quitting time, again, and asked, Let me buy you a drink. There is a new bar opening up, Steppenwolf's. This place was so new that I had never heard of it. My creeper sense went off. So I said, No thanks, I already have plans. Another time, he said. I chalked his request up to a stressful job. Maybe he'd had a busy day. I wish I could forget about it. The following Friday, he asked me out for drinks again. Boss was hitting on me. I am the new guy, and the youngest. Boss is not only married, but I suspect he prefers younger men. His older son wouldn't be that much younger than me, and his youngest son was still in high school. Maybe Boss assigned me to the lonely mailroom because he wanted to visit the new guy, privately. Does my creeper sense ever shut up? Not around, boss. I could have reported him to HR, but unless I have some kind of proof, it's best not to get involved. I might not like my job, and I definitely don't like my boss, but I still have a paycheck. Boss came down to the mailroom and worked with me every Friday morning. And every Friday morning, he invited me to have a drink with him after work. I declined every time. Things changed two weeks ago. It was halfway through fall semester, and the interns arrived. 
they'd be here for six weeks. Juan was assigned to boss's department and given one of the vacant cubicles. Carlos Silva Martins Dos Santos. He's 22, and it was the Wednesday after boss's latest attempt to ask me out to Steppenwolf's. As per normal with new employees, I went to talk to Carlos about mail and email protocols and setting up a temporary password for his account. He wasn't at his desk, so I quickly wrote him a note about accessing his account and getting his mail. It isn't hard to access email or set up a temp account. I'd check with him later to make sure he didn't have any problems. As I was delivering the mail, I overheard Carlos talking to one of the guys. Normally, I could care less about other people's conversations. But Carlos said, Guess who boss asked out for drinks on Friday? Ever hear of a place called Steppenwolf's? Did you say no? Some guy asked. You never say no to your boss, Carlos said. Maybe that was why I was confined to the mailroom. I always said no. I paused to listen. I had just become last week's toy boy, and boss had moved on to younger, fresher blood. I was fine with that. I didn't know how I felt about boss asking Carlos. At least he hadn't asked me. Besides, boss was an adult. Carlos was an adult. What they did wasn't any of my business. Except boss was married, with a family, and double Carlos's age. It did confirm one thing. Boss stepped outside of his marriage to date much younger men. I didn't know much about Carlos, except he had four last names, which probably meant his family were Portuguese. And I assumed he was close to finishing his degree, because he was now an intern. Carlos didn't have a lot of money because I gathered he still lived at home and helped support his family. The family picture on his desk showed a lot of people, including five brothers and sisters, his parents, and all were surrounding a very old woman who sat in a chair. Their grandmother, perhaps. Plus they had two big pit bulls. That weekend, I went out with a couple of friends, saw a movie, went to a nice restaurant, did normal things. It was my last normal weekend. I didn't worry about Carlos and my boss until Monday. It was another normal day organizing and delivering mail. I found myself dropping off a package to the cubicle opposite Carlos's. Carlos never noticed me. He was talking to a friend of his saying, I think boss is gay or something. I went to Steppenwolf's with him last Friday and Steppenwolf's isn't like any other bar I've been to. I pulled my phone out to do some research. Steppenwolf's was the newest gay bar in Vegas and had opened a few weeks ago. When boss had first asked me to go, that must have been its opening weekend. Its website listed simple first names and bios of the bartending staff, the managers, the owner, and a couple other people. They had the rainbow pride flag as part of the decorations on their website. They were loud and proud. It also listed a menu of about 20 drinks and prices. It also had a few classic bar food delights, like pepperoni or cheese pizza, cheesy chili fries, spicy wings, and barbecue sliders. Nothing unusual, but nothing tempting either. Oh crap. Boss had taken a straight man to a gay bar? Wasn't it written somewhere that you don't do things like that? I found myself offended on Carlos's behalf and I'm gay. Boss had crossed a line. I couldn't help myself as I leaned nearer to Carlos to better hear. I'd never been to a gay bar before, Carlos said. It was weird. I mean, it was almost all men and a couple of drag queens. Men bartenders, men dancing, men at all the tables. It was kind of strange. Nice bar, though. A couple of guys even tried to hit on me, but Boss scared them away. Boss bought me a blue Hawaiian. I'd heard of them, but I didn't think they were that blue. Boss even took me to the dance floor and we danced. Dancing with your boss is messed up. Carlos moved out of listening range. My creeper sense kept going off. Something about this disturbed me. 
Don't chalk it up to jealousy. I don't care about boss like that. I don't even like him. Surely it was a simple matter of my boss being overly friendly and taking the new guy out for drinks. He had tried that with me, but I declined. Every time. Besides, when a new bar opens, everybody visits. Do straight guys go to gay bars? I don't think so, but I could be wrong. I told myself not to get involved. After all, I have a job with a steady paycheck, and I need those because I still have to finish paying my student loans. There shouldn't be a problem with Carlos and my boss being together. There isn't a problem. Okay, there is just one little problem. The problem shouldn't matter. It's not of any consequence. Carlos and boss were adults. What they do is none of my business. Oh, God. Except it does matter, and matters in the worst way. My creeper sense kept going off. Blame it a little on my Catholic upbringing. I don't consider myself Catholic any longer, but the lessons from catechism still stuck in my soul. Some inner part of me was uncomfortable. My 45-year-old boss was married and had a family and was hitting on the young guys at work. Creeper sense definitely went off. Don't get involved, I told myself. It will only cause problems. So why did I feel guilty? Especially when boss's wife came over for his birthday and took him out for a long lunch. The next Friday, boss asked me, how about going out with me after work? There's this bartender at Steppenwolf's who makes a great blue Hawaiian. I'll buy. I didn't want to be rude, so I simply lied. My new boyfriend wouldn't approve of me stepping out. I did not have a new boyfriend, or even an old boyfriend, but I wasn't going to tell my boss that. Why did this conversation make me feel so uncomfortable? I can't believe my boss responded with, It's just two guys getting an after-hours drink and relaxing. Think of it as... Bonding time. I'll call my boyfriend and see if we have any plans, I said. I stepped away and faked a call before coming back and saying, Sorry, he's already bought tickets to the new thriller that opens this week. Boss left me alone, but I noticed him giving his special attention to Carlos. Did that mean that I was boss's first choice? When I said no, boss went to Carlos. What do I do? Don't get involved. Both of them are adults. Both of them know the consequences of their actions. Or do they? Carlos seemed so young. I couldn't stop worrying about Carlos, still in college and being hit on by a much older man. Did the kid realize the trouble he could get into? Forcing myself back into my work, I concentrated on regular life. Until I heard Carlos say, I must be doing something right because boss asked me out to drinks again. He said I'll be hired as soon as I graduate. He must like your work, somebody said. And I mentally said, He likes the fact you're a very naive, straight twink. Since I kept saying no, was boss making Carlos his new future boy toy? Was Carlos simply a notch on boss's belt? I am willing to bet boss's marriage isn't going very well. One side of my brain worried about Carlos. The other side said not to get involved. What would happen if boss's little office romance got back to his wife? Or if I got involved and my boss found out? Can anybody spell F-I-R-D? After work, I went for a second run of the day because I had to get my thoughts under control. Maybe I was worrying over nothing. Then again, how many other interns had Boss secretly dated and his wife didn't know about? I stopped at a bench in a park to do some stretches, put in my wireless earbuds, and placed a call to Josh. He picked up on the first ring. You're calling after hours. Is there a problem? I need some advice, I said. Should I get involved in something that is none of my business and risk my job? Be specific, he said. 
Should I do the honorable thing and save a 22-year-old kid from a big mistake, but it means risking my job and destroying someone's marriage in the process? Sometimes it's safer to stay quiet, Josh said. Is someone having an affair? Our boss is putting the moves on the new intern, Carlos, I said. I believe Carlos is straight and doesn't know boss is married. Let's put this a different way, Josh said. Imagine you're 22 years old. Would you appreciate someone saving you from a complication that could last years, including a potential lawsuit and could result in getting fired if this all came out? Not to mention a black mark on your employment file that could make you unhirable? Or would the person who could help you stay quiet and mind his own business and instead let someone with an overactive libido destroy your life? Wow. I said, you're no help. You didn't come to me to make your decision, Josh said. You've already made it, and you think you're a fool for what you've decided. You came to me for validation because you're afraid you've made the wrong choice. Have I? I asked. Does it matter, Josh said. If you don't jump with both feet, you'll regret it. Do you want to live with that regret? Gotta go. Wife and I are meeting the kids for our anniversary. By the way... If you do get involved, try and stay anonymous. I don't think you need your name tossed about on the company's rumor mill. I listened in on Carlos's or my boss's conversations for the rest of the week, paying particular attention whenever they said Friday or Steppenwolf's. I learned that they planned to head out for drinks right after work. They didn't even bother to hide it. Either this poor kid was questioning his straightness or experimenting with something new, or he didn't realize that a middle-aged merry man was hitting on a young college guy and looking for a short-term hookup. This had disaster written all over it. I shouldn't get involved. But I am. I can't believe I'm doing this. Is it stalking or simply protecting the new guy? Friday night. I kept a change of clothes in my car, and I left work as soon as I could. Parking my car about five blocks from the bar, I changed clothes in a nearby mini-mart and called an Uber to take me the rest of the way. I entered Steppenwolf's. I found a table in the shadows with the best view of the door. I ordered a virgin cosmopolitan, a side of pizza and wings, and waited. Boss and Carlos must have gone out to eat before coming over, because I waited a while. It gave me plenty of time to be nervous. Steppenwolf is from Norse mythology and is based on mythical wolves. The club had none of that. Dark walls, dark floor, multicolored strobe lights mostly focused on the dance floor. About three dozen tables with chairs and hot bartenders around a dark bar decorated with color-changing neon tubes. A dozen designer bar seats nestled under the bar. It was one of those modern clubs that if you've been inside one, you've been inside the mall. Of course they had a disco ball with its color-changing spotlights and wall monitors showcasing some of the guys dancing. At least a hundred men danced, or drank, or flirted. The bouncers were guys with arms the size of pile drivers, and if you're into muscle-bound, they qualify as seriously sexy. I like muscle heads, but because I run, I'm too lean for them. Sitting in the dark gave me time to think. Carlos is just how I used to be back when I was 21. Innocent, gullible, trusting. One-on-one -on -one attention from a silver fox had left me giddy. What's a silver fox? Slang for a good-looking man in his 50s or 60s, hitting on 20-year-olds. At the time, it made me feel important and special. He gave me an expensive jacket and expensive shoes and took me to the nicest restaurants. I'd spent the night at his place once, but mostly we hooked up in nice hotels. He was the top. He was in control. I was his boy toy and arm piece. He dressed me like his personal mannequin. Expensive clothes, salon-styled hair, the works. He even proposed... I was so happy. It came with a price. My soul. 
Six months later, I learned he was married, and his pretty words were lies. The entire affair tasted like dirt. The man was only using me because dating younger men made him feel young. Right after I turned 22, he found another 21-year-old and sailed with him into the horizon. I'd never been special to him. He only cared that I looked the part. What we had shared had been fake. I'd been used and then abandoned. I'd felt hollow ever since then. That was why I was helping Carlos, the new intern. I barely knew him, and we worked in different parts of the building. But I saw me in him. My boss treated Carlos as his boy toy. Carlos reminds me of me, and he is about to get in way over his head with no way out. The big difference was that he and boss worked with each other, which meant that Carlos potentially faced a nasty mark on his employment record. That... If this got out, it could prevent him getting a good job. Blacklisted at 22. Carlos didn't need that. I was on my third virgin cosmopolitan and second pizza. I justified all the food by telling myself that I was carb-loading for an extra long run tomorrow. When Carlos and my boss finally arrived, it had been close to two hours. Boss had his arm across Carlos's waist, guiding him into the dark bar. Carlos was already well on his way to getting drunk. My heart immediately began to race. If I was going to do anything, it would have to be soon. I sipped my virgin Cosmo and watched and waited for my chance. They found a table, ordered blue Hawaiians from the bartender, They left jackets on their chairs to show the table taken and went dancing. Nothing seemed out of the ordinary. I wouldn't make a good private investigator because I was noticed. The bartender brought me another virgin Cosmo, sat down next to me and asked, Are you a cop? What's so special about the couple you're watching? Why? I asked. I'm Samuel Hayworth. Evening manager and one of the owners, he said. We've put a lot of work into this place. Our business license, food permits, and liquor license are in order if you need to see them. We passed fire inspection before we even opened. If there is an issue, we need to know. What do you know about that couple? I asked. The man is a regular, Samael said. Guy has a different barely legal every week, except this new guy has been here a couple of weeks now. Personally, I prefer older guys, but it isn't a crime to like younger. Aren't barely legals 18 or 19 year olds? That guy is 22, I said. It's all a matter of context, he said. He's barely legal to drink and enter a bar. What sparked your interest in them? I asked. Me and the guy started noticing the older guy came in every week. Then he started bringing a different arm piece every week, or picked one up here, he said. You're not the only person checking them out. So what's that guy done? And, as a business, do we need to be worried? I looked through the crowd, but not knowing what I was looking for, I couldn't spot who was the other guy. I decided to tell a simplified version of the truth when I said, I'm Sander, and I'm not with the cops. I'm trying to keep a friend of mine, the younger guy, from getting used. His name is Carlos, and he is a nice guy, but he doesn't understand the ways of the world. Who is the other guy watching them? Table down by the dance floor, Samael said. It took a few seconds to find the guy, and I observed him. Maybe two years older than me, he wore a crisp, lightweight, golden brown blazer, coffee-colored khaki slacks, and hair trimmed so short he could have had it cut at the marine barbers this afternoon. The other thing, he had, were undercover cop vibes. Why were the cops interested in my boss and Carlos? To my knowledge, the cops hadn't been to my work. But since I keep to myself in the mailroom, I might not have noticed. Why come to me first? I asked. Samael shrugged. You're closer to the bar. Why did life keep getting complicated? 
I needed to separate Carlos from my boss and somehow sneak him out, then get him back to his house, even though I didn't know where he lived, all well an undercover cop watched. Which brought me back to the original question. Why were the police after my boss? Or maybe they were after Carlos? Samael left me and joined the suspected police officer at his table and asked him a few questions. Great. Samael pointed me out and they both looked at me. I didn't have time to focus on either of them because Carlos and my boss came back from the dance floor, smiling and laughing. My boss ordered drinks for both of them. They started with blue Hawaiians. Carlos gulped his. My boss pretended to sip his. Boss ordered something harder and clear. Vodka shots? The suspected officer covertly took pictures, a couple of me and many of my boss and Carlos. I did the same. Another round of vodka shots? Was boss intentionally trying to get Carlos drunk? It was working. Carlos kept getting drunker while my boss simply nursed his drink. I had to make my move while Carlos could still walk and in spite of the undercover police watching. I had hoped Carlos would have told me his address as we left, but we didn't have time for that. I called an Uber, starting point here, ending point a motel about a mile away. Expected arrival time was six minutes. Too much could go wrong in six minutes. I walked over to Samael at the bar, made sure my tab was paid, and said, I'm going to need two minutes to get Carlos out of here. Can you tell Carlos's date that his work called? Something about his server fritzing and they're waiting for him on the bar's phone. Maybe distract the police guy for a couple of minutes too. Just so I can get Carlos out of here. I greased his palm with 50 bucks. Samael nodded and said, It's done, my friend. Good luck. Samael quickly wiped his hands on a towel and took the phone off the hook as if it had a call waiting. I ducked behind a group of people, trying to blend in. I had to time this perfectly, better than perfectly. I received a text that the Uber was near. Samael walked over to my boss and told him something. It's go time. I ignored the nerves. My boss got up from the table and headed for the bar. My gut twisted into a pretzel. I ran over to Carlos. God, he smelled like an alcoholic on a bender. I'm getting you out of here, I said, and grabbed his arm. I like it here, he said, his words sloshing. I tried a different tactic and said, the Uber you called is waiting outside. A small bit of confusion trickled through his eyes. I didn't call one, did I? Yes, you did, when you found out Boss was married, I said. He's not married, Carlos said. Have him show you the pictures, I said. I don't know how I got Carlos standing, but with one arm around his shoulders, we started walking to the exit. Whatever Samael had done, the cop didn't come walking over. I had to hurry before Boss noticed us, but Carlos wouldn't hurry. One of the bouncers suddenly took Carlos's other arm and I said, I'm getting my friend out of here before he passes out. The bouncer only nodded. He'd probably heard that same speech a million times. We made good speed and got out the door. The Uber hadn't arrived. I checked my phone. One minute out. Dear God, hurry. I don't have time to wait. What if my boss walked outside right now? What would I say? How could I explain myself? Finally, the Uber was here. The bouncer helped me get Carlos inside. The outside door to the bar opened. The undercover police officer walked outside. He saw us and yelled, Hey, stop! I slammed the car door behind us and yelled at the Uber driver, a young Hispanic woman, to go, 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 go. She took off. The cop made a couple of running steps after us and stopped. Our Ubers bet off. I had escaped. Carlos had escaped. Everything would be fine. I hope. Carlos was almost passed out, but he was safe for the minute. The cutest, oddest snort escaped him, kind of like a snore and cough combined. He rolled over, and I think he completely passed out. 
I took deep breaths to calm down. Carlos looked so vulnerable and so young. Was he only three or four years younger than me? Crap, 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 and double crap. Would this be considered kidnapping? Had I just broken the law by rescuing Carlos? I've just kept getting more bizarre. We arrived at the motel, and Marissa, the Uber driver, waited while I paid for the hotel room, and then she helped me get Carlos inside. I wrote a quick note. The man you were with is married with two kids. He's using you for a cheap romp while stepping out on his wife. You are not his first invitational, and probably won't be his last. I want you to keep your dignity and pride, which is why I got you out of there. You see, the same thing happened to me once. Here's fifty bucks so you can get home in the morning. Consider this a chance to restart your life, because there might not be somebody there to help you the next time. Be careful, be safe, be smart. I didn't sign a name. What had Josh said? It best to keep this anonymous so the rumor mill back at the office doesn't have any ammo. Once Carlos was on the bed and the key card lay next to the note, I had Marissa take me back to my car. I kept looking out the back window for a cop car. Didn't see any. Once I was at my car, the fear took over. What had I done tonight? I barely knew Carlos, and if my boss found out it was me that stole him away, I'd lose my job. If Carlos ever found out who I was, he could press charges for kidnapping. Tomorrow morning, he'd wake up in a strange motel room. I hope he was drunk enough that he wouldn't remember what happened tonight. Would he call the cops immediately? They could perform some type of criminal investigation, discover that my debit card had rented the motel room, and link it to the Uber. Marissa could identify me, as could the bartender and the undercover cop. I'm beyond screwed. All I wanted to do was to keep Carlos safe, prevent what had happened to me from happening to him. Who said that no good deed ever goes unpunished? Why did I feel like my life was about to get flushed? Because it was. My apartment was dark and the sounds of the street washed through the stillness. I kept the lights off and left the front door open so I could look out. A police car could be arriving any second. My fridge had four beers. I drank them all and waited all night in my recliner for the cops to show up. Odds are, Carlos wouldn't call them until he woke, maybe at eight or nine. Assuming his phone had a charge, would that mean they'd be here by ten? I didn't sleep. I gave up around seven in the morning. Knowing my date with freedom must be limited, I locked up and went to the local diner and ordered their most expensive breakfast platter. Carlos would never relate to my reasoning, but a small part of me, a very small part of me, dared to take pride. I had saved him. Maybe if Carlos is lucky, what had happened to me would never happen to him. My life had stopped as soon as the silver fox dumped me. As soon as I realized I'd been used. As soon as I realized I had no value. Our relationship had been a lie. After breakfast, I ran the longest run I had ever attempted. Fifteen miles. Nobody came for me that Saturday. Sunday, I spent the day with friends. We went to the movies and I treated them to burgers at Millie's Diner. I blew so much money because... I knew the cops would be waiting for me back at my apartment. It was kind of a last hurrah. They weren't waiting for me at my apartment. Does that mean they would be at my work? If Carlos found out that it had been me that had saved him, would he ever forgive me? At the very least, I had ruined his date. Why had I gotten involved? Why am I obsessing about a total stranger? I didn't sleep Sunday night. I arrived at work early Monday morning, expecting doom and yelling and losing my job. I couldn't sit still. First, I checked email status. Everybody, even Carlos, had green flags next to their accounts. Snail mail had arrived on Saturday, but with no one around to divide it, I focused on that. Carlos didn't come down to yell at me. 
Boss didn't come down and say I was fired. The police didn't haul me off to jail. Maybe I could breathe again. I finished dividing up the morning mail, including interdepartmental memos, notes from my boss that he didn't want emailed, and some from our clients. Moment of truth, I snuck out of the mailroom and began delivering. The god smiled on me. Carlos wasn't at his desk. I inhaled and relaxed. Boss's office door was closed, but the light was on. I left his mail with his secretary. As soon as I was done, I ran back to the mailroom. Maybe if I hid out, nobody would remember Friday night. Carlos wouldn't ask weird questions that would eventually point at me. Maybe I had gotten away with the rescue. One of the new interns waited for me in the mailroom. A woman in her early twenties, with long nails and, and hair bundled in a bun behind her head. Having trouble? I asked. I think somebody is playing some kind of trick on the newbie, she said. But I do what I'm told and don't ask questions, even if it's something dumb. What do you have to do? I asked. Collect ten signatures so somebody can scan them and have them auto-printed when needed, she said, and yours is one of them. Can you help me out and sign this? Talk about busy work, I said, and pulled a pen from my drawer. It only took a second to sign it. I finished up a couple of emails and went outside for a break. Maybe I was safe. Or maybe not. A handwritten note waited for me on my desk. It simply said, Sander, I'm having trouble with the send functions with my email account, as in it won't forward, send, or group send. I think the software needs to be reinstalled. Can you come see me? Carlos. My stomach went into full panic mode. Did Carlos suspect? Everyone I worked with knew I was gay, and had Carlos made the connection that I had been at Steppenwolf's? How do I handle this? I would pretend this is just like any other help request and keep quiet about Friday night. After I was as calm as I could be, I went to Carlos's desk. He wasn't there. I backdoored into his computer, deleted the email program, and connected with the server and reinstalled his email software. It would be finished downloading in ten minutes. I know, I know, I know. I should have checked the software first, but I was too nervous. As it reinstalled, I looked at the papers on Carlos's desk and the panic I had felt earlier doubled. He had the handwritten note I had left him explaining how to activate his email. Next to that was the note I had left him at the hotel room. Next to that was the paper the intern had carried around asking for signatures. Mine was the only signature on it. Had I just been played? Carlos had circled several letters and styles on the papers. Individually, these papers all added up to nothing. Together, they showed that they were written by the same person. Me. Oh my God. Carlos knew it was me that had kidnapped him from his date and abandoned him in a hotel room. I had only tried to save Carlos from what had happened to me. But he wouldn't see it that way. Suddenly... I relived that final night nearly three years ago when the silver fox broke up with me because I had grown too old. My eyes burned with the old shame. I had only wanted to save Carlos from a similar fate. I had to get out of here, go back to the mailroom and think. I couldn't leave. The program hadn't finished reinstalling. I was trapped. I took a deep breath and tried to ignore my rapid heartbeat. What I had feared would happen was happening right now, in front of everybody at work, where were the police? Why can't the computer process this faster? A man walked past me, wearing a nice suit and marine-style short hair, as if he had just gotten it trimmed at a military barber. The undercover policeman from the other night was here. I'm screwed. My stomach went into full panic mode. Don't be sick, I told myself. Don't be sick, don't be sick. I wanted to run back to the mailroom, grab my stuff and flee. I couldn't. The reinstall had several minutes left. My armpits felt cold and damp. A chair pulled up next to me and somebody sat down. 
Carlos, what do I say? Somehow, I nervously stammered, um, I, um, um, the reinstall, it's, it's almost done. Have you ever done something stupid but didn't realize it until it was almost too late? Carlos said. I didn't understand what he said for a second, so I looked at him hoping he would explain. I did Friday night, Carlos said. Why did you do it? I'd just turned 21, I began, but couldn't keep the waver out of my voice. He was on the other side of 50. It was fun and he made me feel special. I was his 21 special. I thought we had something that would last. He was the top and always had to be in control. Our relationship lasted for six months. And when I turned 22, I wasn't special anymore. He threw me out like yesterday's broken CD and replaced our love with another 21-year-old. Carlos looked at the computer screen, grabbed the mouse, and clicked on something. I'm sorry about Friday night, I said. I didn't want what happened to me to happen to you. Boss is 45 and married. I had to get you out of there because I had to do something so Boss wouldn't destroy your life. Like mine had been destroyed. Carlos swallowed. His eyes focused on the screen. Sander, a voice whispered in back of us, you humiliated me and now I'm going to destroy your career. You're fired. Pack up your desk. I want you gone in five minutes or I'm calling security. Oh, and make sure your future job calls me for references. I will make sure you will never work again. It was boss. Yes, sir, I said. This was as bad as I feared. Carlos froze. Of course he heard everything. Carlos, boss said, you'll get drinks with me tonight or I will tell your mentor teacher how bad you are and get you kicked out of the program. No good deed goes unpunished, whispered through my brain. The shame read in my face and I quickly fled Carlos's desk and made my way to the mailroom. I didn't have a lot of personal stuff to pack, just a couple of photos of me hanging out with my co-workers and a fun coffee mug I'd gotten at the Christmas white elephant party. As I put my few things in a box, I leaned back and stared at the walls of the mailroom. This should be the worst day of my life. But I had saved Carlos the other night. He'd never realized the pain I'd saved him from, but some part of me celebrated. I was losing my job. I'd have to cut back on everything while I looked for another. But I was proud that I had helped Carlos. As nervous and scared as I had been this weekend, as terrified that the cops would descend upon me, as sure that I would lose everything, in spite of all that, I would help Carlos again. I downsized to a smaller apartment so I could live off my savings for a couple of months while I hunted for a new job. Instead of using my old boss as a reference, I could refer my future employers to talk with HR. I had options. And then I didn't. Sander Mortensen, a man said. I'm Lynn Taggart. I understand you've had a bad day, but I have some questions that need answers. Let's talk about Friday night. Why were you at Steppenwolf's? It was the undercover cop from the other night. I'd seen him wandering the building earlier looking for me. The police had found me after all. This was it. I was about to be arrested for kidnapping Carlos. I was so nervous. Everything just jumbled out of my mouth. I had to get Carlos out of there because he was too drunk to know better. Officer Taggart looked at me as if I were crazy. Maybe I was. After three days of living in fear, I finally relaxed because I didn't have a choice. Time to face the music. I sat down on my chair and stared at my hands. I blabbed, and Officer Taggart just let me talk. I don't think he could have shut me up. When somebody else came into the room, I just looked at my feet and kept talking. Whoever it was quietly closed the door behind him. I didn't pay attention. I blabbed for a good half hour. I told them about what had happened to me years ago and how I was afraid of it happening to Carlos. I blabbed about boss hitting on me. I blabbed about every detail that came into my mind, including getting fired just now. They say confession is good for the soul. So my confession 
must have saved a dozen souls. It's been fun, I said, holding out my hands for handcuffs. And I don't regret what I did, but you can arrest me now. I won't resist or cause problems. I'd get Carlos out of there again because nobody should have to go through what I did. Not only did the police officer take notes, but Carlos leaned against the wall behind him. He was the person that had come in earlier. No good deed goes unpunished. My life was ruined. Your story is interesting and contains several points I'll look into, Officer Lynn Taggart said. But it doesn't answer any of my questions. Maybe I should explain something. I'm not the police. I'm a private investigator hired to investigate your boss concerning his infidelity. My cousin, Carlos, posed as an intern to help me get the dirt. What do you mean? What he said startled me. They weren't the police? What? If they hadn't come to see me because of me kidnapping Carlos, then what was going on? I looked up. Carlos looked at me, his face slightly red, a weird, expressionless, emotionless look on his face. He had heard everything. I am so confused. I looked at Lynn Taggart and said, I've answered everything about Friday night that I can think of. What did I miss? The Uber driver's name? Did she lodge a complaint because I needed her help to get Carlos out of her car? With as much as Carlos drunk, did he throw up and I never realized? Oh, Lord, Marissa doesn't need to take me to small claims court. I'll pay for the cleaning. Lynn Taggart looked at Carlos. I'm taking your boss down. Carlos has been wired this entire time, and I have recordings of everything, like the conversation at Steppenwolf's, and your boss firing you, and coercing my cousin to get drinks after work, plus a lot more. You'd be surprised at how much I've already given his wife. I looked at Lynn, then back to Carlos, then back to Lynn, and said, Then Carlos was never in danger? I'm not in trouble for kidnapping? I did all this for nothing? No, Taggart said. I'm not the right age. Your boss prefers younger, straight men he can seduce. My cousin is gay and agreed to help me out by pretending to be straight. His job was to make connections with your boss but things didn't go as planned. The other night, Carlos miscalculated, and he was very drunk, and your boss was very sneaky. A lot of places serve a diluted vodka so people handle them better and can keep buying drinks. Your boss ordered double-strength vodka, the hardest stuff, and had my cousin so drunk he couldn't walk. You had Carlos out of there and safely secreted away before clueless me realized there was a problem. Carlos stepped forward, took a seat next to me, and said, You were my angel, saving me when I didn't know I needed to be saved. You really did rescue me. Let me buy you a drink, because I need to say thank you. Epilogue My boss was in a lot more trouble than fraternizing with the male interns. Lynn and Carlos had dug up a lot of information about multiple affair partners enough so the divorce proceeded at a good clip. Boss has also been cooking the books at work, but that's another story. I found out what happened Friday night. After Carl vanished, my boss panicked. He went home and remotely logged into the company servers to delete a few files. He would thought he'd gotten away with it, never realizing that he was being monitored by company security. Lynn tracked Carlos through his phone and arrived at the motel to find Carlos passed out on the bed. They'd missed me by less than 30 minutes. Carlos hadn't figured out it was me that had saved him until he saw the two notes side by side. Monday morning. This morning. Since boss had fired me without going through HR, I wasn't really fired. I kept my job. Boss wasn't so lucky. He'd hit on a lot of interns over the years. He was let go and had to answer a lot of questions, not only with his wife, but with the cops as well. Carlos and I dated. At first, I think he did it because he felt like he owed me. But when we were alone, he called me his angel. It had been years since I trusted someone, but I learned that I could trust Carlos. He was the top, but a kind and caring one. I liked being his angel. When we married, he told everybody that he was a better man because an angel watched over him and protected him, and that angel was me.
the end. Thanks, friends, for listening. I'm Gio, author and reader of this story. If you'd like more stories about gay men falling in love, please stop by my channel. And on a side note, my old microphone died, so I'm using a new microphone. I don't have the settings figured out, so I would appreciate it if you would tell me how it was doing. Anyway, peace.